part of our Extra Time series. Now, Extra Time is a series of exclusive interviews where we talk to professionals, ex-professionals, coaches, managers, and the people at the heart of the game. So delighted to welcome our guest today. He's been at the heart of the Klopp revolution at Liverpool Football Club. It's the first team goalkeeping coach, John Achterberg. John, are you well? Thanks for your company. I'm good, Steve. How are you? Great, thank you. Good to see you getting a couple of days uh, rest because it's a busy season, isn't it? Yeah, it's non-stop. It's, uh, you know, on the coaching side, it's not too bad, but uh, for the players, obviously, it's uh, quite intense. So you have to try and find a balance in training and, and prepare for the next game. And when the next game is gone, it's quick, prepare for the next one and get ready again. So intense, but uh, yeah, we have to deal with it as good as we can. It's a non-stop roller coaster ride. We'll talk more with John about life at Liverpool in just a moment. Let's get a word from Chris Anderson, first of all, from the Stephen Gerrard Academy programme and find out um, a little bit about the programme at the moment. Welcome, Chris. Cheers, Steve. Thank you. Tell us why um, these extra time interviews are, are so important and how they can help the work that the academy is doing. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was a, a great idea to be able to provide student athletes, you know, players, coaches, um, from all over the world, uh, an insight of to the football world in Liverpool and, and, and England and so on. Uh, and we wanted to bring on guest speakers such as John to, to obviously tell the story and to inspire uh, many different people uh, around the world and, and obviously show the, the network and database that we have uh, of that calibre of, of player, coach and so on. So, yeah, we're, we're really excited to have John and, and all the other guests that we have on at Extra Time. And, and some of the elements which you're hoping to hear from John today from a coaching perspective, Chris? Yeah, so um, again, it's, it's dealing with uh, with different types of players from all over the world. Uh, again, because of our program here, we, we have international mm -hmm. players, and again, they're coming from different backgrounds. So John, you know, will be able to explain a little bit about the different cultures of players and, and bringing them into Liverpool. And and obviously, again, John himself has travelled and, and moved to Liverpool and moved home, and and obviously had some fantastic experiences. He's been here for a very long time, so I guess he's calling it his, uh, his home now. Uh, but again, it'll be. Interesting to hear some of the things that John says about uh, the, the city and, and obviously the culture and so on and so forth. OK, uh, we will talk with Chris a little bit later on. If you're just joining us, we'd love to know where you're from. So which part of the world you're logging in from. So please include that on your Zoom message. There is a chat box. So we'll get some questions to John a little bit later from yourselves. Um, but let's start off this extra time interview with a, a word or two about Liverpool right now. And John, you must be a, a very proud man having seen Quaveen Kelleher take to goal the other night. Now, this is um, a young guy who's come through the Liverpool Academy. Of course, there was an injury to Alisson. It meant that you gave an opportunity, yourself and Jurgen Klopp, to a young guy who stood out on the night, arguably a man of the match performance. What sort of pride did that bring to yourself personally? Um, yeah, it's always good. No, uh, the philosophy in, in the club is really to try to develop uh, young players like... Um, Stephen, your academy where we are just talking about wants to do as well to give everyone a chance and make a career and of course they, they have to get to the right level and they're working day in and out uh, every day to get to the next level and, and Kweef is uh, one of the goalies who have been working now I think the last four or five years at the first team level basically pretty soon after the boss came in with us and makes steps all the time and keeps improving and, and works hard. So obviously he got the chance uh, to show what he can do and then did really well. It was his European debut. He did more than really well. And that save at the very end, uh, which denied Huntelaar, one of the great European strikers, the great pedigree strikers, was the sort of thing that all of a sudden makes you stand up and take notice of this young talent. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, his character is pretty cool and calm you know and he is a humble guy so on, on that uh, you know I think as a goalkeeper you have to be pretty calm in making decisions and stuff and, and have a cool head on the other side you also need to have good speed reactions and the way we play we like to obviously create a, a full package goalkeeper which means he can play with the feet as speed reactions and, and come for crosses and, and defend the space behind the defender. So um, so we, we try to train like that. And, and, and he has been working in this program since 16 and 
has done really well and, and has the attributes we are looking for. And he got a chance to shine and, and took his chance and, and did well. Was he quite chilled out about the opportunity that had been handed to him, John? Um, yeah, of, of course. Uh, he, he, he had a smile on his face, which is a good sign. And, and then obviously, yeah, you know, he has to deal with it and, and try to do the same what he, what he has been doing in training. And, and uh, you know, then he has to deal with the pressure, obviously, from the outside. But it looks like uh, he just did what he had to do and obviously had a really good game. He's a great example of a youngster that's come through that has received the, the right care and attention around him and, and his growth looks fantastic. And, and Liverpool is becoming renowned as a club that, that's doing that with youngsters from the academy. So you only have to look at the goal against Ajax, Nico Williams combining with Curtis Jones. And it's a conveyor belt of young talent to be around. Yeah, but uh, I, I think that the philosophy has always been there to try to develop... Uh, in the academy, uh, players, goalies, of course, that's my, my part, but players has always been the case to try to find, if you like, the new Steven Gerrard. No, that's how it's been and that's how it always gets used. So, uh, and then obviously the boss is uh, vital and, and Pep who have a big eye on the young boys. And now they bring feet in, of course, as well to to help that uh, to keep going and try to find the next young talent and bring them up also to to train for, first of all, all always to show the manager what they can do and and if the manager likes it then and there is an opportunity what is not always easy if everyone is fit but if if there is an opportunity, he, he looks at that as well. So uh, a lot of, of the young boys get a chance and then obviously it's up to them to produce and keep producing and, and making the next step. And then the next step you get by playing always. And, and that's where you need to fight and drive every day in training if you're with the first team to be the best you can be and try to be better than anyone else to make the next step. And they're learning from the best, aren't they? Look, John, how would you describe the past few years at Liverpool Football Club? It's, it's been a clean sweep of everything. The Champions League, the Premier League, the World Club Cup. Uh, the list of honours is, is fantastic. How would you sum it up? Um, yeah, it's sum it up. It, it's starting, of course, when the, the club got taken over, really, uh, because uh, the, at the moment when I started, the, there was quite a bit issue money wise to to try to improve and get the uh, better players and then with the new owners uh, it it got a turnaround they keep investing and and making possibilities to uh, improve the whole structure around the club uh, with the, the scouting uh, in the end the managers and 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 then also uh, improve the level of the players um, and, and yeah, then it's good to see that uh, every every year we made a new a step. And when the when the, the boss uh, come in, you saw that um, everything improved even more uh, on the field. The tactics, the way of training, the intensity of training, um, the speed of movement from the players, the speed of thinking from the players, uh, and and yeah. It was a nice way to see that uh, develop, and really, uh, we we got uh, from the first uh, year he came in probably already into finals and and carry on every year to get to them. Although we didn't win the first few, uh, then obviously we start winning them, and the team had more experience in how to deal with games and how to deal with the pressure of winning them games and. Um, yeah, it's great to see, but you know, it's nice but that we all won this thing, but all the things we won, we want to achieve more and, and you need to create that hunger and drive all the time. If you win one thing, you want to win the second thing. And, and that is uh, something what is in the mentality of the players and of, of all the coaches and, and, and the staff around it. So that's what you need. And that's also what the, the manager created to get this drive and a mentality in the team and, and on in the people. Um, you want always to have the best every day to try to improve.
Well, that my mentality is to always want more. Could, could you pick out one mo moment personally that really felt special for yourself in the past couple of seasons? Um, yeah. I mean, if you win the Champions League, that is uh, special, I would say. And it's, 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 for me, it's difficult to, to pick really one particular thing. You know, uh, the Premier League winning is special too. And, and um, for, for me, uh, yeah, every moment like that you had, have to enjoy. Yeah? But the day after, you're already thinking about uh, what to do for the next because that's how it is, you know. I speak to the players after we win the Premier League, you know, we make sure from the first day we have to be on it from the next season because everyone wants to be better and everyone wants to be just be. There's no time to keep celebrating. You have to drive on again and, and try to be better than the year before because everyone wants to be better. Everyone wants to beat you, so you have to be better. Let's dive a little bit into your history and your, your footballing roots to find out how you've become the coach you have now. So just yeah. give us a, an idea of the teams that you started with in, in Dutch football and the, the level you were playing at. Um, yeah, I, I was in. I started in a local amateur team in my hometown, Utrecht, really. And yeah, I, I was creating... If I look back, I creating my own... Uh, uh, way of of uh, becoming yeah, the goalkeeper by uh, when the when the club was open the doors I was there I was training every day and I was twelve training with the first team and I end up playing in the local team who was playing probably uh, Cheshire level or something but I was playing with fourteen in the first team so there was no professional in my hometown the, the professional club they could only sign players from uh, 16 on because they had no uh, youth system at that moment because there were like three professional clubs going together so in in the agreement that was not possible till really i think when 20 years ago when they uh, changed it to have also youth system so professional they only started with 16 so when i was 14 playing in 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 my local first team and playing for the regional team um then i got a trial uh, in the end uh, with when i was 15 with the utrecht u team and then they took me on so i i go from there was there six years where i think two years in the u team one year's research and three years with the first team and then um then um they let me go if you like so i had to uh reinvent my career again and you know you're learning from the negative uh, to be positive and working even harder and then uh, one manager who did the pro license remember me being there and uh, i was close to signing for an amateur team to play in the first team and then uh, he took me to another premier league team nec breda where I make my uh, in the same year my my uh, league in uh, league uh, debut if you like and I was there for three years. Um, the goalie had a ten year contract because the Bosman rule came in, so they wanted to keep him. I played I think about fifteen games in the in the Dutch Premier League and then. I was on a free transfer, so they would give me a new contract, but I wanted to play, so I decided to go Eindhoven. That was the league below, but I thought I can play every week and then I can make the next step. Um, I go there. I really didn't like it because uh, I was always used to train on a high intensity and a high level of players, and it was felt like a, a kind of uh, amateur level training. So. Uh, and I was always one, one to fire every day. And there was boys like the one day yes and one day no. And, and then was doing my head in basically. So, and then I said, I want to, I want to leave after one year. On that time, my hometown Utrecht wanted to sign me back uh, for the first team. Um, but then I got injured. And when I was injured, uh, I, I was out for about six months with the uh, yeah, growing stomach issues so I had to come fit all the clubs in Holland were full I started in a, in a Premier League team in, in Holland to get fit and then I could go on trial to Tramir 
and from Tramia, uh, two weeks on trial, John, John Alvarez uh, signed me and uh, I, uh, I played there for 11 seasons. And, and then uh, that's where I retired from playing as well. That was a new lease of life for you, wasn't it, moving to Tramia Rovers? And from listening to you there, it sounds like life was quite tough in, in those times with the Dutch teams, but somehow at Tramia, moving abroad, yeah. rejuvenated you. Yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I, 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 I was uh, convinced that I could do it because I was training, obviously, in, in the highest league in Holland and I saw the goalies who I was with and I didn't feel I was any worse. The problem is you need to get a chance to show what you can and and obviously by coming to Trami, they were in the championship, so you've been throwing in a bit in the deep end. You have to work just quick. Um, I, I was pretty fit uh, when I came from the the team where I was uh, working, and uh, and and then obviously. Um, yeah, you have to want to produce. You know, I I, I always liked the English mentality from what you saw on the foot and the football on the TV by uh, working hard and and you know I had this kind of mentality anyway, so it suited completely. And uh, I think uh, I impressed in the two week trial, uh, Holdo and the players there. So yeah, you come in there and uh, they signed you, and I think I I, I go back after two weeks was two weeks in Holland and then come back and I was in the weekend, the first game live on TV. I think it was Swindon Town and uh, and yeah, that's how it went. And and then you go and you're learning uh, every day more and and uh, yeah, you develop even more from or from the experience to being abroad, from the mentality and and uh, and and the way to succeed as well and 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 survive if you like um i always felt i had to be better than anyone else i always wanted to be better than anyone else and that's where you work for it's interesting to hear you talk about perhaps um learning about coaching while you were still playing and i just wonder whether the mentality is different in in england as to perhaps in europe as to what stage within your career you start making that consideration. When, when do you sort of reflect now and think you knew you wanted to learn more about coaching? Oh, I, wa I was early, early in that, you know, really early, to be honest, I think, because I always thought um, I want to be in the football and I want to uh, make after the football also a career in, as a goalie coach. So, if I'm honest, I was uh, already in Holland starting and, and I think I was... 24 when I moved to Eindhoven I go uh, starting there um, doing my level three and two and then I was doing all the academy in Eindhoven from the reserves down all the goalies already so I was 24 starting that and then um, I did a local team in the night time where I do all the youth uh, keepers and in, in the second year I did I did also the first team there. So so I was already starting before I go to England. And then when I come to England, uh, I was uh, already trying to carry it on, really. I, I organized some goalie days, um, probably when I was 28, something like that. Uh, but the, the club, Trami, was not really too happy that I did uh, all the coaching next to the playing. Uh, so then I... I stopped it for a little bit um, and, and I think when I was about 32, I really uh, fired it up again and I was basically doing every night coaching. Uh, I did a goalkeeping school in North Wales. I did one in Netherlands, in Liverpool, one in, in, in Birkenhead. So I had three different goalie schools. I had people uh, doing some coaching for me, try to improve everyone. And then I did the whole youth system in Trami as well, where I try to find my own goalkeepers, sign the goalkeepers. And then say in the last four years, I was like player coach uh, in the first team as well. So, um, so yeah, my, and I did all the licenses when I then was in England. Um, at Trami, I finished the, the goalkeeping A license and the outfield A license. So there was only the pro license left. Mm. 
um, when I finished playing, basically. So uh, at 38, I, I, I basically retired footballing-wise. I could have carried on probably for another one or two years because I kept myself really fit. But then I had the, I got an offer from Liverpool, basically, and then I changed my mind on that. And you don't turn down an offer from, from Liverpool. And actually, probably in hindsight, you look at the importance of what you put into coaching and learning about all those methods while you were still a professional. That mm. was probably key to, to how you ended up at a club like Liverpool Football Club. Yeah, because I, I had... I was not. Uh, I had already a lot of experience doing coaching um, uh, at a any level, basically. Um, so I, I was ready to make or in the next step, if you like, or a better step. Um, but you need a bit of luck as well. And then I, I got the offer really to uh, do on the twenty threes and and the whole academy and. Uh, and I thought, you know, I can still probably play one or two years, but, you know, I, I didn't enjoy it as much because I had one or two injuries and I felt that I couldn't give and play as good as I want to be. And because I wanted to be always the best and uh, it was physical, not always possible. So I thought, yeah, it's the next step and 38, then it's time and. I go from there straight in a full-time coaching job at Liverpool. It's a dream job to to go and work for them and you take it and that's how it went. We have people watching from all over the world. Welcome if you're just joining us. Don't forget, put where you are and your, uh, your name alongside it. We'd love to hear from you a little bit later on. This is Extra Time brought to you by... LLS and the Stephen Gerrard Academy. I, I just wonder what qualities you think are necessary, John, to be a coach. I'll just read a quote from uh, Brian Little, who described you as the most professional player he'd ever worked with. Is it professionalism that stands you out? Um, yeah, it's nice of him to say that, no? And, and I, I could say that... Uh, that's what, how, how I'm, I always want to be the best and, and try to be inventive and looking at new things and always look at the progress. Obviously, I create my own philosophy as a coach and as a player. And, and I think that that suited Liverpool as well, because obviously, like uh, I said to you before we started, uh, uh, we want a goalie who... who um, develops everything what we need as a goalie. You know, he can defend the space behind the defense if they play high, if they play around the box. We want the goalie to come for crosses. We want the goalie to play with left and right foot. We, we want them to be a good speed and reaction shot stopper and, uh, and, and, and so on. And, and that is uh, what I, I try always uh, to teach. Uh, I learned that from Holland and I was the same way playing for Tramir. And, and that's how I try to teach because I always thought if I can teach the full package, then you always can play for the best team or any team in the world. But if you are a goalkeeper who just stand in the goal and wait for the shot to come, then you probably can only play for a team who plays with 11 in front of the goal mm -hmm. and there's no respect disrespect to that but that is the way and that can also make a good living but I always wanted to try to copy the Dutch way tactical and and technical with the English mentality so I try to combine this to make my own progress as a coach the margins that make the difference. Look, let's just say a big welcome to quite a few people who've messaged on here. Daniel from Malaysia, Dennis in Long Island, uh, Omar in Los Angeles, David in Boston. Uh, we have uh, Dinesh in Nepal, Mitchell in Seattle, uh, Tanme in Mumbai. And if we come down a little bit further, sorry, I can't read through everyone's name. I'm going to get to a first question because I think it ties in quite well uh, with what we were talking about with Jurgen Klopp and philosophy. We'll do that while John yeah. takes his kiss off. He's getting a bit warm at the moment. It's, it's, all, that talking, yeah. so, it's all that tra training he does. Um, the dynamic that Jurgen Klopp creates, it, it's fascinating. Isn't it? Everyone fights for the cause. Everyone seems to believe the same thing. They, they read from the same page. 
Uh, we've got a question here from Beth, who says, what would you describe Jürgen's biggest strength as? And is it, is it connected to what I was just saying there? Um, yeah, the, the biggest strength is to create really a, a good environment and a team environment and, uh, and put everyone in the same direction, really. Um, the supporters, you change the mentality of the supporters, if you want to like um because uh, how, how tough is that when you're at liverpool yeah it is really tough because obviously they've been used to see the best and 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 they want the best so you have to produce the best and and that's how it is you know uh liverpool is i think one if not the best club in the world and there's maybe two or three more uh, who you can put in the same bracket I, I look at it obviously to the Liverpool eye, but um, I, I, I would say he, he tried to uh, understand that we need the people in the stadium till the last second of the game because we can win the games the last second of this, the game as well, if you like. So um, that is basically what he tried to uh, tell the people in the press a few times that we need you to stay and help the team and get behind the team also if it doesn't go 100% good and and, and be uh, positive and uh, he, he tried to uh, make uh, the sometimes it was a little bit negative in situations because of that it didn't went too well but by him talking to it and his enthusiasm on the sideline he changed that and, and that's what he tried to do with the supporters, but also with the staff around him, the people in the club. We're all in there together to create the best atmosphere for the players and the team and, and the best environment. And, and, and that is what we're looking to do, to get the best environment and, uh, and prepare the best to be able to get the best results. Yeah, I suppose it all trickles down from the top, doesn't it? And gives you coaches extra confidence and belief mm. when you see the man leading the club d doing these things. Uh, maybe pick out a specific example. A few years ago, after the 2-2 draw with West Brom, he got the players to line up in front of the cop. And at, at the time, it, it received a little bit of negative publicity. But interesting, a few years on, how everyone perceived that yeah. as the start of maybe a mentality of bringing everyone together. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, and 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 uh, yeah, that was also his idea. No, he he uh, mm. saw it in, uh, in. Obviously, he created that in Dortmund, and he tried to create that atmosphere really the same again in in this way. So so he did really well in in that way. And 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 you uh, said your feeling about it as well. No. Yeah, a fantastic moment. I'll get some more questions in just a moment. You, you work with arguably the best keeper in the world in, in Alisson. Unfortunately, he's out for a very short period at the moment. Yeah. What, what, what are his qualities as, as a keeper? What makes him so uh, good? I, I think what makes him so good is uh, obviously all the attributes, what I was talking about before he obviously brings to the table you know he is calm on the pressure uh, he's calm in decision making if something goes wrong he still stay calm and obviously he reads the game well but he has also uh, unbelievable speed reactions and power and uh, mm. and you know he is a, a match winner so um, by being a match winner he wants to win everything when he plays he wants to be the best he wants to improve. He works really hard to improve. Um, you know, his distribution is uh, is one of the best on that side as well. And 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 he looks at the other people as well and and see things and try to improve from that. So I I would say that all these kind of things that that uh, makes him what he is as well. Does working with the best get the best out of you as well, John? Um, yeah, of course, uh, it, it gives you energy, you know, if you see that the goalies do well, it gives you energy to want to do more and better, but you always have to find the, the right balance, no, because you have to prepare them for the game, the next game, we have to do the right thing at the right time for each individual, um, we have to make sure he's ready for the next game, so it's it's a combination, we all you have a discussion with, with all the goalies and with himself, 
you know so it's it's kind of a, a team in a team if you like and and it's a little bit similar to what uh, what the club also want to achieve with with the whole team as i just like, subscribe to you but besides the technical element of it yeah. is, are you almost a, a counselor as well I and mean, obviously you've worked with different goalkeepers so if we go to simon yeah. minulate who was a good goalkeeper but yeah. had some high profile errors but was that a time when perhaps you're having to work as a coach as someone who is there for the player who needs that extra support sometimes yeah be, be, I, I see it like that you know if the goalie plays well i play well if the goalie doesn't play well i also feel that that i didn't play well so you always want to find solutions you always want to help you're always there to try to help and and improve you know it's it's still a team and and i i still feel that uh today you know even if ali plays or adrian play or uh, keller play it doesn't matter which goalie i work with or who plays you you feel the same you feel the same pressure probably maybe even more pressure if you're on the sideline than when you played yourself you know because you hope that everything goes perfect and, and that's why you work for and that's how you try to prepare the goalie as well we try to work on what will happen uh, in the training uh, for the game uh, coming up because certain teams play in different way we try to recreate exercises where this comes out because we think this is how they going to create chances and we try to then mentally prepare the goalie to know what happens so he knows what to do and how to react with it. Okay, let's go to some of the questions here. Hardik says, uh, what is Alisson's attitude in training? Uh, what are the ingredients? Yeah, you're still there. Um, I don't know if you heard me still, but uh, Alisson's situation is really what i just explained he works really hard uh in in training you know and i always say um the moment where you stop working hard the moment is where your level will drop um and and that's how i feel i saw it uh, or you see it sometimes with goalies where they become inconsistent in what they show and then you think uh, are they still keeping the same level in training do they still work as hard as they've been working because in my opinion uh, you have to keep your drive you have to find your drive you have to always create a new drive i, I always say when i was playing to Ali, I said, I want to get as quick as I can to 10 clean sheets, then to 15, then to 20 and try to reach 20. Um, if I was in training, I always want to be better than the other goalie. Uh, when I was uh, um, in, uh, in the game, I wanted to be better than the opponent uh, goalie. So you always create this kind of things. And I, say, I always say that to the goalies, to to make them think about that and and that's how i see uh this kind of situation all right steve steve's uh nipped out there john i think he throws so uh, i'll come in and, and ask a couple of questions if, obviously if you don't mind so yeah. uh, there's a question here that um some of the guys are saying you know as a goalkeeper coach kind of what are the hours that you kind of put in uh, and what would a day-to-day -day life be like for a goalkeeping coach um yeah so it's a uh, it's it, it can be a really uh, when I started uh, it was mad if you like but when I started I, I had uh, like weeks uh, 80 hours plus just in the club and then when I came home I was still watching goalkeepers to find new goalkeepers to scout goalkeepers so it can be uh, it's it's non-stop you know and 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 now I have uh, kind of routine but uh, yeah I'm still dro drop the kids off in school I go in to work and sometimes I come back seven o'clock in the start when I was at Liverpool I did the academy next to it so it was like eight to eight something like that or eight to half eight and and it was normally uh, sometimes seven days a week now with the busy schedule it's still sometimes seven seven days a week 
Um, but yeah, the, the, the training is obviously only about, uh, yeah, depends because we play so many games. So now it's a training, maybe uh, one hour a day or one hour, 15 a day, but you need to try and find the right balance to prepare for the game, to get the, the right speed reactions in. Uh, you have to obviously pick the right exercises to do. Then um, you have meetings, uh, what the team training will be. Um, the boys obviously go into the gym. So, and, and then I do watch all the games. You watch a bit of the opponents, uh, how they play, if you don't know them yet, because of my experience, most of the times I already know, but then you have meetings, how the opponent plays. We make a goalkeeper meeting where we talk about the opponent does, how they take corners, free kicks and all this stuff. Did they play out from the back? Do they press the goalkeeper? Do they not press the goalkeeper? So it's really uh, intense, if you like. And, and next to it, you're watching also new uh, opportunity goalkeepers, younger ones from 16 up. Obviously, the rules change in England now, so we can only scout from 18 up. And and it, it's like a broad, uh, broad, and complex job, but really really enjoyable. Uh, Chris, thank you very much for that. I think Zoom kicked me out. I can't believe we have all these people from all over the world who can stay online, and I get kicked off uh, on Merseyside. I've, I've got a couple of questions. Uh, that have come and I've lost a few that were previously sent before I got kicked out. Uh, there's one here from Omar, I think it is, who says, I see Alisson doing the same drills uh, at Liverpool in training sessions as he does with Brazil on international breaks. Is it something that he asks for, John? Um, yeah, we, we, we so, some of them drills uh, he does with Brazil too, yeah, and, but then we also try to tweak them and make them our own. But uh, some speed exercises he likes to do he does them with brazil and then you know like i said you have to find a way what we need to train for the for the, the game the next game you have to try in a little bit how to keep him sharp and and fit and and then you combine it so i make the sessions but sometimes obviously you also listen to what the goalie feels he needs because it's a team like i said and, and we have to find the right way to make sure he's ready for the next game. So, yeah, uh, Brazil does uh, the, the same kind of exercises, but not all. So it's what suits him. Uh, Adam says, as a person who wants to become a professional keeper, what yeah. can you say to support or encourage me to keep getting better? Well, I, I don't know if you have followed the whole conversation I had, but if you heard what I all did when I was younger, it, it's about investing in yourself, you know, improving all your skills, uh, playing with your feet, movement in the ball. I, I watch other goalkeepers in the past. Uh, you can watch on YouTube goalkeeping training. You can see other goalkeepers, how they move. You can go to like goalkeeping schools to get extra training. Um, so there's a lot of possibilities. Uh, you can improve your strength, your power if you do kind of gym work. So uh, there's a lot of things out there where you can improve. And, uh, and, and you know, by watching, it's, it's really important too. Uh, Grace would like to know, is there a growth in the number of women who are working as coaches, um, specifically at Liverpool? But I think in the, in the game as a whole, and I think yeah. we saw significantly last night, there was... Um, a woman uh, referee in one of the Champions League yeah. games. It's definitely becoming far more prominent, John. Yeah, yeah, of, of course. In, 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 in Liverpool, we have in the medical department uh, also, uh, she is a kind of masseur, I think. She is a masseur or physio. And we have a, a psychological uh, girl. She helps uh, players. So uh, in every department, there will be... Uh, coming in obviously in our coaching staff uh close uh, at the moment it's still all men but you know the the ladies team obviously have a, a ladies manager so it, it all comes in you know and and yeah there's no issue there could be lots of people um watching who are considering maybe coming to mm. england pursuing coaching or even professional sports yeah. and it's on a slightly different level to perhaps some of the players that have come in at Liverpool, but 
there's uh, a great array of different nationalities at Liverpool Football Club. And I'm quite interested to know how quickly do these players settle and how much does it sort of help their personal growth? Um, important, obviously, depends also the age and the experience. If it's a young boy, we have uh, uh, obviously a coach for who looks completely after the young boys. As for the goalkeepers, uh, we, uh, my assistant does a lot also with the younger ones. We, 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 we always look at the younger ones and try to help them. You know, you speak to them, you try to feel, make them feel welcome. You ask them, we just, uh, we actually signed just a Brazilian goalkeeper. So, mm. you know, uh, obviously with the Corona situation, he has to, had to be in the hotel for two weeks and he was there with his dad. So you have a face call, FaceTime, you talk with him and you ask him if everything is good, if he needs anything, can we help? So we got him like a PlayStation, we got him some gym, gym equipment, so he can already train. So it's about uh, uh, communication, try to educate, you know, we, we get him straight away English lessons. His English was already good, but uh, we, we give him then uh, the English teacher to let them also learn how they have to communicate on the field. Let them know how it works in in the in life in England, what you can do and what you can't do. They have uh, from the club uh, also uh, um, lessons uh, how to deal with social media and all that stuff. So really, uh, you get well looked after and well helped. You know there is for everyone special people to do things. You have people who look after finding a house, if they need a TV or whatever, anything like that in a club like Liverpool, um, they will help you with anything and any issue you have to feel them welcome and any needs for them, they will uh, be helped with. So they're acclimatized to life much easier. Uh, yeah. Let's go to loads of questions here. Let's try and get through a few. Jacob says, what type of sessions do you do with the keepers? Uh, one day do you work on distribution, another on shot stopping, or do you do it all in one day every day, a repetition type yeah. thing? Yeah, it's a little bit of everything really, but it all, all depends uh, where the game is. Uh, if they just had a game, then you would not do the next day a lot on kicking and stuff like that. Um, it's a, we, we work it in a program. If we would have played Saturday to Saturday, you're working uh, in a four day leading up to the game. So minus four would mean we do a lot of movements on a fitness with some speed and some reactions. On the second day, we do a little bit more with power, jumping, speed and reactions. And uh, on the third day, we do a lot more tactics for the game coming up and, and a little bit of speed and reactions. And then the one day before the game, it's about, about the tactics and feeling good to be ready and fresh for the game. So if uh, if we do in like the, the first and the second day, we sometimes put also already a tactic exercise in if we think we need more for the particular game. So that's how it works a little bit in the Saturday to Sunday or Saturday, Saturday game. If you have three days and then the next game come, the, the, the day after the first game, it's like a recovery. The, the, the goalie is in the gym doing some gym exercises and, and bike to recover. Uh, the other goalies, they all train normal. So you need to try to get the speed reactions and the fitness levels in there. So they will do the say an extra session. And then on the second day, you would do the preparation for the next game already, what it was vital for that game with some reactions. And, and that's about what you can do really. So um, it's then a bit limited. So this is roughly how, how it works. And then you have to tweak it all the time to uh, what happens in, in any day if the goalie is a little bit more tired or if he has an issue, we have to adapt all the time. Busy, busy schedule. Uh, Josh wants to know, what's your average day like? Oh, I just, I think uh, I had uh, before you... Um, oh, is that before I cut off? Did he ask that question? Yeah, I, I tried to explain a little bit what I did, uh, so I must have got that. Right, OK. Um, Hardik says, how difficult is it to become a football coach if you haven't played at a professional level? 
yeah but i i think i i think that is not really um you not everyone played at the highest level became a coach no it's about uh doing the education for it uh, learning, learning the management, learning skills to talk with people, learning to create a team, learning through all the licenses you have to undertake and, and the different courses are there. And by doing and repeating and training, you become better and better. And then you have to try to make the next step like as a footballer, every time you want to improve to be better, to make the next step. And it's the same with education to become a coach you have to try to drive on learn from other people become better try to get to a higher level every time and and motivate yourself to be making the next step absolutely intriguing this chat with john Actorberg on extra time we, we will try and get through a few more of these questions uh, john advice for smaller goalkeepers this is from hammy regardless of how much they improve and stand out what can smaller goalkeepers do to get more visibility or opportunities because they live with the stigma of being too small? Yeah, I, I always say, like, try to improve your agility, the jumping power, your speed around the goal, because if you are quicker in movement, you can also get to the corners by having quick feet and, and push off. So I would, I would say to try and improve your jumping power and your speed in your movement will help to improve that side on it you know your timing have to be perfect if the ball comes in can you catch the ball in front of the player instead of behind you know all these kind of things you you know you can still you can still being in the right positioning and stuffing in game and and making good decisions that doesn't make a difference if you're tall or small uh, thank you for all those questions. There are a few more, but unfortunately we couldn't get to all of them. We just got a couple more things to talk about regarding the Stephen Gerrard Academy. You got a personal relationship with the Stephen Gerrard Academy. So tell yeah. us how that was formed, John. Um, yeah, I know basically from the start when they started it up and they invited me over to, to see when it got open. So, and I always stayed in touch with them. Obviously, with my job, it's not always easy to get involved, but I always speak to them. And and, uh, and they asked me to become an ambassador. And I said, yeah, of course, I do that. I always try to help if I can. You know, I, I really enjoy talking and helping people uh, to, to improve as well. You know, I, I've been always like... I got help from other people if I needed that to develop. So you have to give something back to. And I, I like to be involved in this site and try to help people. And, and from my knowledge, I try to give that because I want people to use it, you know. And, and not everything maybe is perfect, but you can use it and try to better yourself with it. That's how you always have to improve, always listen to people and and see if you can use it and that's what i try to do and obviously they asked me to help them and and of course i do that and, and it's brilliant work at the moment let's bring chris anderson back on to um, this conversation and talk a little bit more about the academy programs that are on offer chris just outlined some of the um, the programs that you, you really think are worth talking about yeah so i mean we've uh, we've built on the uh programs uh, for international and domestic students. Uh, we have over 150 players, male and female, uh, domestic and international, which is fantastic. Uh, and we've kind of got the three programs now that will uh, both do the education and the full-time football aspects. So, you know, a lot of the things that John was talking about, about the training and, and the schedules, and that's kind of, we want to replicate the professional game. Now, we understand that obviously Liverpool are an unbelievable uh, team and, and the coaching staff and the playing ability is phenomenal. Uh, but we really want to educate and develop those players as much as we possibly can to kind of hopefully get them to them levels if possible. You know, we know it's very difficult, um, but we want to to better the player. We want to better better the athlete and, and the person. And, and what John was talking about, having people around the programme and, and the club to help and support players, you know, we feel that we do a great job with that for our international students. We, you know, we make sure that we, we have someone on the residential care so that they are looked after away from the football pitch. And again, from an academic standpoint and from a coaching st uh, standpoint, we have the, the structure and infra uh, infrastructure and the staff to support those players. So, yeah, we have the International BTEC programme, which is a high school mm. 16 to 19 programme. 
We have the, the Pro Experience, which again is, is a programme that allows students and players from all over the world to come for three and six months uh, in, a, in a training and playing aspect only. Uh, yes, there'll be stuff, again, what John mentioned about social media and mental health, you know, because it's important and, it, and it's important for, for us to develop those young people in, in those uh, aspects as well. And then we also have our international degree programme, uh, which is with Liverpool Hope University and that's undergraduates and, and master's uh, students as well. So the aspect of having a degree in whatever they choose to do, but also being in that full time environment, uh, we know that it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a positive step for these young athletes coming from around the world. John, if you hadn't had a professional career, knowing what you know about the Stephen Gerrard Academy, would you look at that sort of pathway? Yeah, for sure, because uh, I would have been determined to make it. And I know, and I, I obviously, Stevie was at, uh, I, I worked a little bit with Stevie. Uh, he was uh, the player at the time, but knowing how professional he is, he would uh, always want uh, to get the best uh, teachers there and the best coaches. And, and he tried to get the best program for them and give everyone the best chance to make the next step and development in their career. So that's why I also try to help because I, I think he has the right uh, way for the people to help them as well, to give something back to football and to the people. Um, and that is why it's vital for them to to, to get uh, the help from us. Um, and and he, Chris will tell you that uh, they do anything to give them the people, the girls and, and the boys, a chance to make the next step in their career. And, and I, I'm convinced that the way they do things, the way they give them a chance to develop, that they can make a good career. And if that means you want to be as a coach or sports science or as a player, you will get a, a great chance there to to make this step and like i said from my experience i got let go one time in my early states i go back learn from it and improve and and fight and 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 i i always my motto is hard work pays off and for sure if you have this education and they give you all the facilities to help you with with any expert, they they can help you, and and then you have a good chance to make a good career. Yeah, I think what I've got out of you, John, is hard work, dedication, focus, never mm. giving up. Chris, it's been a fascinating insight listening to to John's career and his path, and there's quite a lot that can be taken from that for people who are pursuing a pathway, whether it be professional sport or coaching. Definitely, yeah, and it, and it even inspires you know our staff uh, because again, you know. Stephen is a massive part of our, our academy and, and again, to, to have the relationship that we have with John as, as an ambassador of the, the programme too and, and obviously a good friend of, of our mm. staff and, and stuff. So it is fantastic to, to hear. Uh, and again, you know, some players just miss out. You know, some players do just get released and, and they, they don't make it at the level that John did. And, and again, but, you know, even when he was a professional footballer, he was always still thinking about what was next and what, what how, how he could improve himself and, and, and that's kind of got him to the positions that he's got to do today. And again, he's, he's giving back to the football as well as, as, as doing what he's doing from a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, a lot that we can take from for sure. Uh, he's been an inspiration to, to many people. And I guess, you know, even if you're 30, 40 or 50 listening to this, I'm sure you can take something from it. I'll just throw this question in at the end. It's for you, Chris. Uh, what is Stephen Gerrard's involvement with the academy? Yeah, so uh, obviously the relationship that the guys, the directors have of the academy uh, with Stephen has been, been fantastic and it's been for a very long time. And uh, Stephen's overseen the academy and he's, he's now obviously our, our official ambassador and one of the directors of, of the academy also. And, it, and it's fantastic to, to see that he's really involved and really passionate about developing young people. And, um, you know, he, he, he came down um, a few months ago when he, when he wasn't in his bubble and it was fantastic to see him uh, be enthusiastic about the young people that we have and he was he was adamant that you know the standards that we were setting uh, were, had to be high uh, because again it was his name and and uh, he's worked so hard to, to be the person that he is so he, he's massively involved obviously we understand that he's not here on a day-to-day -day basis because he's he's at the top of the league with Rangers at this moment in time and working really hard just like John is with Liverpool so um, he does touch base he's on Instagram all the time commenting on on photos and videos and, and things like that so 
Um, yeah, he's a massive part of it, uh, and he's always uh, always looking for updates on, on how the players are doing, how we are as staff, how can we better ourselves, how can we deliver a better service. Um, so, yeah, his involvement is, is massive in the programme. And just very quickly, Chris, in terms of how people would find out more information at the moment, uh, if they're listening or they want to pass on this conversation, where do they go? Yeah, they can go on our Instagram at, at stephengerrard.academy. They can also go on to stephengerrardacademy.com on our website. And there's a lot of uh, information on those websites. Also, they can email me at ca at stephengerrardacademy.com. Uh, and again, we can have uh, individual chats or, or group settings depending on, on the situation. But we can talk about the opportunities that we offer and, and how we can support them with, with their processes. John, we really appreciate you giving up so much time. We know how busy your schedule is. It's relentless in the Premier League and the Champions League. And keep up the great work. You're one of the great gentlemen of the game. We, we certainly hope uh, that there's more success this season. Many thanks for your input and extra time today, John. No problem. I hope uh, you had a good time, all uh, the people to watch. And, uh, and hopefully... Uh, Everyone wants to join the academy because if you want to make a career, then you have a good chance there to help yourself. Good luck there. And we keep in touch and I'll speak to you soon all. Keep doing thank the wonderful you, John. work. John Achterberg, thank you very much uh, indeed. And of course, that was a special extra time interview with John Achterberg. We'll bring you another exclusive interview next month. Thanks, of course, to Chris, uh, Mark Garnett, everyone who's helped organise it at the Stephen Gerrard Academy and LLS. And I hope you enjoyed it. Invaluable insight from myself, Steve Hothersall. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>